In this video, we will discuss the use of gypsum as a mineral binder and construction material used throughout the ages from prehistory to modern times. We will then examine the principles underlying its characteristic setting and hardening. You are probably most familiar with gypsum for its use in orthopedic plasters applied to support broken limbs. The term plaster refers to the traditional starting material, plaster of Paris, a fine powder consisting of calcium sulfate hemihydrate. When mixed with water, this becomes a plastic mass that, upon hardening, retains its shape and transforms to solid gypsum, a calcium sulfate dihydrate. The formation of gypsum takes place spontaneously and rapidly, but still allows enough open time to shape or apply the material. This, together with the ease of production, has determined the success of gypsum throughout the ages. Gypsum plasters and mortars were known already in ancient Egypt, where they were used to line walls, to prepare surfaces for paintings, or to encase mummies, make molds, and funerary masks. From ancient Egypt to the present day, gypsum has also been appreciated in construction to make relief decorations for walls, ceilings, and floors. Thanks to its plastic quality, gypsum has also been very popular among artists, be it for making molds, draft sculptures, or even final pieces. From random amateurs to famous artists as Auguste Rodin, Camille Claudel, and Alberto Giacometti, gypsum is omnipresent in their work and often gypsum splash rich workshops. In modern days and as a construction material, Gypsum is much used as foamed wall boards, offering lightweight and good fire resistance. But an even larger use of gypsum goes into cement production, where it is added as a set regulator to 3-5% to by mass of the cement, a topic that we will cover in a separate video about Portland cement. The setting of gypsum results from the chemical reaction between water and plaster, although in some cases anhydrite is used, as explained in our separate video on gypsum chemistry. The reaction of plaster with water is spontaneous and exothermic. It involves one mole of calcium sulfate hemihydrate reacting with 1.5 moles of water to form one mole of gypsum. This can be rewritten with volumetric stoichiometric coefficients, whereby one volume of hemihydrate reacts with 0.5 unit volumes of water to give 1.4 unit volumes of gypsum. The most important feature here is that the volume of the solids increases by 40%, from 1 to 1.4 units. This is the main reason for the setting and hardening of gypsum, and more generally, of other mineral binders. Apart from this, we note that the total volume decreases from 1.5 to 1.4 units, thus by 7.5% when exact values are taken. This is referred to as chemical shrinkage, and can be understood as a result of water molecules being more densely packed in gypsum than in liquid water. This loss in volume is typically accounted for as porosity. In our previous example, we assumed the mixing of plaster and water in stoichiometric proportions. In practice, however, this would be very difficult to mix, so that extra water is typically added. This excess water, however, does not produce any additional gypsum, but rather, contributes to additional porosity, which has profound technological implications, with particularly negative effects on strength and durability. In short, by adding more water, the porosity increases and the strength decreases. In conclusion, the setting and hardening of gypsum is due to a chemical reaction 
and not to drying, as by contrast is, for example, the case for earthen materials. This chemical reaction involves the coupling of gypsum precipitation with plaster dissolution, consuming liquid water, and increasing the volume of solids. Strength is developed thanks to this reaction, but its value is also conditioned by the amount of excess water used. For further information on gypsum chemistry, please check the corresponding video.